ambulance service as the patient breathing. My name's Kim, I'm on the ambulance crew, all right? This is the Scottish Ambulance Service. We generally get to make a difference in people's lives. The job literally is life and death. No needles or anything on them, though. There's nothing I would rather do than this. Serving every one of us. It's OK, love. It's all right, don't worry. From Scotland's busiest cities to its wide open countryside. Wherever we have fallen, whatever has happened to us. Need a hug. Just feel she's gonna die. But this is a service under extreme pressure. We're constantly apologizing to people. Yeah, it's very busy down here. Which we rely on like never before. We're two shifts down in the Edinburgh and three in the borders. Here we go, here we go, here we go. On the front line and at the other end of the line. One, two, three, four. Scotland's paramedics keep Scotland safe. Three, three the gas. And alive. Help is coming, they're coming as fast as they can. This time, rain causes havoc on Scotland's roads. Ah, it's a bit drizzly, smelly rain this morning, I don't like it. The dangers of homemade vodka. Just sniff it, just sniff it, does <laughs> That stings my eyeballs, that. And paramedics see what happens when scooter meets tree. Why That's is that a... so painful, man? Because your ankle's snapped. The Scottish Ambulance Service deals with half a million emergencies every year. Many of these are handled by SORT, the Special Operations Response Team. These are all paramedics who have extended skills that are used to dealing with difficult or complex situations. We also get trained in command roles, so we're prepared to deal with multi-casualty situations. We go to my Stevie, aye? Aye. Stevie and Pete are sort veterans, working from the services base in Linwood, near Glasgow. Is that us? It's us. For me, it's been allowed to get into, they call it the hot zone working. What are you doing, buddy? Oh, it's annoying you, Pete, it's annoying you you can get to deal with patients in an environment that normal divisional ambulance crews can't get into. I just like to help people. I hate to see people suffer. So, yeah, I'm, I'm there to help people in their time of need, and that's an important thing for me. You make me suffer. Thanks, buddy. This morning, the crew are attending a serious-sounding incident eight miles south of Glasgow. A road traffic accident. Just ahead. Well, the a van has apparently left the road and uh, careered through the barrier. And now it's either at railway tracks, uh, also saying it's near water. So uh, it does sound quite a nasty instant. Could be a, a difficult extrication. And that's where obviously uh, where we come in. It's the height of summer and the rain is pouring down. Put the blower on the windscreen for me, Stevie, would you please? Roger, Roger. Thank you. Ah, it's a bit drizzly, smelly rain this morning. I don't like it. When I come in and do my brief to the team, we discuss the weather conditions to see what could be expected that day, whether it be rain, wind, snow, because obviously a lot of the instances we go to are very challenging and the weather can have a a dramatic impact on those instances that we attend. Another wee bump over there. Oh, oh, shunt. We shunt. So when the information came in that a van had left the road and had overturned and went down 75 foot drop or whatever it was into water, I was concerned and obviously I passed the concerns over to the team. And I think on that particular day, the whole team attended, which doesn't always happen with incidents. Although the number of road traffic accidents in Scotland is falling, 
Latest figures still show over 1,500 people a year suffered a serious injury on the road. Steady. Have destination. Well, we've not really. There's a long this road somewhere. It's long here, aye. Hopefully we'll get eyes on. Come on, sir. They had cordoned off the road. I believe the fire service were just arriving on scene at the time. Couldn't really see much until we got out the vehicle. It was then you could see that a car had hit the barrier and it was down the embankment. And I believe the car, if I remember right, was, was lying on its roof inside some form of viaduct with running water inside it as well. The van has come to rest just metres from a busy train track. It's a good distance. She's, she's went down there. Obviously, when you see a van lying down an embankment on its roof, then, yeah, things go through your head that this has got to be a kind of serious accident. Our colleagues who were in the fast response vehicle for sort, they were on scene moments before us. They'd already made their way down to the patient and because the way the vehicle was situated, they couldn't get the patient out of the vehicle. It's a sort of step ladder that we use and we utilised that that day to, to get the patient out. When we get to a scene, we like to kind of a, do a global overview of the scene and just work out in our heads exactly what's happened because from that we can then determine exactly what kind of injuries that this patient could have due to the incident. What was happened here is uh, obviously you can see with the, the conditions, the road's been a bit slippy, but the, the young female has had a puncture. Our vehicle has come through the barrier, left the road, and tumbled in the bank here. I was about 30 or 40 feet. I mean, I was expecting quite a severely injured patient that day. Incredibly, the driver has walked away from this crash unscathed. She told us right away what had happened. She had experienced a puncture. So we know then she's not had a seizure or blacked out at the wheel. I think she was, she was very lucky. If it had been a few days later, with the amount of rain that we had, where she'd landed, that would have been probably a river that she'd have been in, and the chances are she could have drowned as well. So she was very lucky. With the patient safe, the special operations teams can return to base to dry off. Well, just for information, that's all sort resources now left the scene of the road accident. Divisional crew is still on scene uh, with the patient. I think uh, they'll be taken up to RH to get assessed, but uh, you can get further information off them if required. Uh, we'll just uh, revert back to the control group now. Thank you. Aberdeen. Paramedics here work not just in the city, but across the northeast of Scotland. Aberdeen's a, a very busy area to work in. The Aberdeen station where we're based at is the biggest station in Grampian. But obviously we don't just cover Aberdeen city. Uh, we find ourselves all over the place. Paramedic Scott and ambulance technician Rachel have been crewmates for five years. You could be called to a city centre property, you know, it's hustle and bustle and busy, and then the next minute you can be called to the surrounding areas of Aberdeen where you're in full country life, potentially in the middle of a farm treating somebody. So we have the best of both worlds. It's 9.30 in the evening. The crew are at the end of a long shift and are headed out of the city. Stonehaven, an overdose. That's a wee while away. Oh, no, no, we're going to fly down here. Yeah, we were on our way to a Triple Nine call way south of the city and we had just left another locus and was flagged down, not even half a mile away 
from where we'd left scene for the previous call. What's wrong? Something more snapped his ankle. What's that? He snapped his ankle. Have you phoned an ambulance? Have you? Yeah. Because we've got another call to go to. Oh, we've phoned them twice, like, okay. But they've got another call to go to. And it was a gentleman who had not noticed a cut down tree stump and unfortunately crashed into that and went tumbling. I take it it's your left one. Oh, it's so sore. Where's the skin broken? Um, I don't know if it's broken, my whole there. ankle's just popped right out. You caught us off guard there, pal. Uh, Sorry, I thought you was up. <laughs> it's all right, don't worry. <laughs> when we first arrived on scene, um, it was clear to see that the gentleman had suffered quite a nasty injury to his ankle. Oh, oh, no, 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 don't move, don't move. I'm, all I'm going to do is pull your sock, right? Don't you move. Just stay nice and still for me. Oh! <laughs> Slow, deep breaths. Ah, yeah. Oh, my hands, please. Right, don't move. Oh! OK, so your skin's not broken, okay. which is good, but your ankle is, that's for sure. Right. Um, yep. Scott, what do you want to do here? He, um, the skin's not broken. The ankle is absolutely broken. Yeah. It's gone. Yeah. But it's not been threatening. If we get flagged down on the street and we are on our way to another treble nine call or another non-emergency call, then we have to clarify it with our control room that it's appropriate for us to stop and treat this patient that's flagged us down. The patient that flagged us down isn't necessarily a higher priority. They were very understanding about the, the category of call. He was pretty cool with it. He was just, you know, do what you need to do. And if you can help me, then that's good. <laughs> Yeah, we've got come across a male um, that's lying in the street with a fractured ankle. I believe he's waiting for an ambulance. Do you want us to deal with him or do you want us to continue to Stonehaven? If you're with him, you ain't no bother. I'll pop that job on you. Deal with him. Roger, thank you. Ian, we're going to stay and we're going to look after you. Ian's ankle is badly broken and he is in a lot of pain. We started off with some Entinox gas, try and help him with the pain. Right, Ian, have you had gas in here before, Jim? I uh, think so. OK, so you just make a good seal round here, inhale it, <coughs> take a few slow, deep breaths initially. It works pretty quickly, all right, but it wears off just as quick. So when you feel it working, don't just stop taking it because then the effect will wear off, OK? OK. OK? Easy to get people going. Yeah. That's it, nice and slow. And just breathe, that's it, good stuff. While you're taking the gas, I'm going to start taking your shoe off. It's not on tight, so it should be pretty easy. They're brand new as well, he's bottomed to do. Oh, my heed. Well, we're definitely not cutting them off then. Right, but just you concentrate on that and let me do this. Okay. Removing the shoe from a broken ankle can be a painful process, even with gas and air. Just relax, you're tensing up, just relax. That's it, just breathe, just, that's oh, it, yeah. breathe. <laughs> Keep taking the gas. It's nearly there, I just need to slide it. Just, no, no, don't oh, move, don't move, don't move, don't move. Chill, chill <laughs> I know, darling, I know. That's it. There we go. That's it. That's it. Relax. Grinding against the bone. I know, I know it is. I can feel it. Can <laughs> you? What we suspected was a fracture dislocation of his ankle. Potentially a chance of it to burst through the skin. So there was a limited blood supply to his foot. So it's quite important that we try and realign that or try and get pain relief into it to secure the ankle with like basically some splinting or something like that. Can I take this home? No, you cannot take that home, I'm afraid. Oh, right, this what? Is <laughs> Do you feel it working for you? Aye. Is it easing the pain? I still, I'm teasing it, aye, Good. but I still got it. That's what we want it to do. It. Listen, what we're going to do, we're going to straighten out your leg and we're going to secure your leg in this box, OK? And it just means that it's nice and safe. When you do move, your foot effectively shouldn't move. Scott's going to straighten out your leg. I'm going to slide this under and then we're just going to secure this on. OK. All right? OK. So ten big deep breaths of that, pal, OK? Ten. Ten yeah. of them. <laughs> I think for him, adrenaline had kicked in quite significantly and no matter what we were kind of saying or doing, he still couldn't stay still. Oh! 
shoot, 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 breathe, shoot, 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 breathe the gas, breathe it. That's it. There we go. Right. Oh, hi. Oh, he wasn't making it worse for himself, but he was certainly causing himself to be in more pain than he needed to be. Right, listen, listen, Ian, 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 don't you, Ian, Ian, don't, don't you move, okay? Oh, yeah. Right, Ian, yeah. Ian, oh, Ian. I didn't mean to swear. No, it's okay, it's oh, all right. Yeah. Ian, oh. Ian, right, Same just, just breathe through this, okay? Just breathe. Oh. Why That's is that so painful, man? Because your ankle's snapped. It's broken. <laughs> You're going to get a right bonnie oh. stooky. So you will be sneaking about for six weeks. Oh. With Ian's ankle now secure, the crew can move him into the safety of the ambulance. Right, right, listen, listen. Just... Listen. Ah, yeah. Ian, Shoot. Ian. Bam. <laughs> Keep taking that gas, man. Ian, just listen to what we're saying, OK? Good. All right? You're doing just fine. Good. All we need you to do is try and relax. Good. The more you relax, the easier it is for you. And I know it's easy for me to say because I'm not in pain, <laughs> all right? But... Trust us. Right, I okay? Trust you. I trust you. All right? Oh, you're waiting here. Good leg, and okay? Wait, 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 wait. On three, we'll right. go, okay? Okay. And your bum's just going to go up here. Okay. Okay? On three. One, two, three. Push. Well done. Yeah. That's it. Oh! There we go. Oh! Yeah. Right. right. Big deep breath. Uh, yeah. Swing your legs round. That's it. Mm. Right. Okay. Take a couple of puffs of gas again. Yeah, you're all right, good. pal. You're doing just fine. Oh! <laughs> okay, gas, okay, gas. Gas. That's it. Right. You're doing fine. Oh. Right, let's get you into the back, OK? There's a broken bone in there, so it's quite sharp, so that could have easily burst through the skin and muscle. So it's quite important for us to try and keep it as still as we can. Right. You OK right. if I cut your sock, pal? You know something that's the worst pair of socks I've got? Can we cut the new tracksuit? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. No. So, you feel me touching it, okay? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And here as well? I don't do that again. I can feel that, yeah. yeah. Both sides? Yeah. Take the feet? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, it's proper snap, isn't it? Yeah. It probably is a fracture dislocation, yeah. I would Bones think so. It's just protruding on there. It's not quite broken skin, yeah. but it's obviously pushing like it. That's There's what's a swelling. I had no soft. movement in my foot. No, no, but it was before when I first got out. OK, well, we'll just cover you back up and yeah. we'll get you up to the hospital. Okay, All right. Okay. No bother. Do a brilliant job, he's doing. You good to go? The injury to Ian's ankle is serious enough for the crew to alert the hospital. Yeah. Yeah, just because of the injury that he sustained, there was a chance because he was dislocating and re relocating his ankle so often that he was going to have to get his ankle realigned anyway. And that's not something that we treat as a low priority. OK, fine. Right, they're going to take you right in, Ian, OK? Just to get that wee ankle looked at sooner rather than later. OK? No bother. Due to the time delays and things at the hospital, it can be a significant length of time that we have to wait, and that's not something that is favourable to wait. So fortunately for this gentleman, we got him straight into recess, where he was assessed straight away. Oh. Is the cramp set? Oh, no, it's a rattling that side to side. It's that driver. It's nothing to do with the driver. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bad driver. He's back. I've fallen out with people for less. Yeah, I'll fall out with I'll fall out with her. <laughs> Gentle bumps. Uh... OK? Yeah. In the Ambulance Services Control Centre in South Queensferry, call handlers deal with emergency calls from all over Scotland. Tell me exactly what's happened. Many callers will be phoning for an emergency ambulance. OK, and how far did she fall? Some are having the worst day of their lives. 
when I first started call handling, calls got to me an awful lot. I would probably cry two out of every three shifts. Now that I've been doing it for five years, I don't get as emotionally invested. I still care. I care a great deal, which is why I do the job. Ambulance emergency is the patient breathing. You're the patient, okay. Okay, tell me exactly what's happened. Right, okay. What sort of tablets is it that you've got there? Okay, and have you taken any already or are you just intending to? The caller is having suicidal thoughts. Once we've found out exactly what's happened, we then know what protocol to follow. Well, listen, you've phoned for help. That's the first step, OK? We're going to get some help organised for you. Is there anybody else there with you just now? No. Right, OK. It's got some scene safety questions, obviously, to make sure that the crew will be safe as well, because we've got to take them into consideration. Now, are you feeling violent? No, and do you have a weapon there? Yeah, OK. We just ask the questions and answer as necessary and support the caller while we can. OK, I'm also autistic as well, OK? So you're speaking to someone that can relate, all right? Autism is a neurological development. It's um, classed as neurodivergent, whereas the majority of people are neurotypical. Um, we think differently, our brains are wired differently. I like to liken it to a different operating system. Just rest in the most comfortable position for you. Now, I'll stay on the line with you as long as I can. If anything changes, just let me know. OK, I'm just here if you want to talk, but if you want to sit quietly, that's OK as well, all right? Just like neurotypical people, no two autistics are the same. Their lived experiences won't be the same. But sometimes I feel when a patient or a caller lets me know that they are autistic, I think, OK, I've got something in common with you. I have, I am autistic as well. And sometimes letting them know that you can relate to them, it gives them a bit of comfort, a bit of reassurance that they're being listened to. If there's anything you do want to talk about, we can talk about anything you want, all right? Kirsty cannot tell how close the ambulance is to this caller. It is important she builds a bond over the phone. Yeah, I can relate to that. It's hard, you need to prove that it does affect you while at the same time still trying to live a, a semi-normal life. They might be going through a rough time, but we're there to support them and get them help when they need it. We all have our own different strengths and weaknesses. At the moment, you're dealing with a, a weakness just now. No, no, I'll stay with you. I just want to make sure that the help does get to you. All right. You're welcome. This is, this is what we're here for. Finally, Kirsty can hear the ambulance arrive. She has been talking to this caller for 30 minutes. Once you've gone through the call with the protocol and you're sitting on with a person, and you've said all the things that we need to say, um, and there it's just holding their hand almost on the phone until the physical crews are there. That's how I see it anyway. In a 
Aberdeen, Rachel and Scott are at the start of another night shift. So, so that's us going down to A and E to relieve the seven to five day shift because that job's been in since half two, and it's now twenty past five. Sixty-six-year-old male with chest pain. Scotland's hospitals are under intense pressure. This means ambulances queue up outside, waiting to hand over their patients. If a crew's shift ends, they need to be relieved by the crew starting the next shift. Oh, I'll stretch it. I'm not for... No, because the stretching doesn't warm it up enough. Well, there I don't go. understand how this works. Because it warms it up. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's anything to do with that. You're though. welcome. So when we take over from a day shift crew, we get a handover from start to finish. What they've found, you know, the, the nature of the call, what their assessment's been, if there's anything untoward that we need to be aware of. Hello. You are right. How's it going? It's an ongoing problem with a lot of the hospitals in Scotland just now. You know, they're working at capacity. They can't get patients discharged quick enough to create space for the new patients coming in, so it just creates a backlog. Bit of a bigger bump here. And that's why we're ending up taking patient care to the ambulance outside the hospital until we can get them in. How long have you been waiting for to get in? Is it? Yeah, just, just slightly over that. You got here at ten past four. You're obviously waiting for a bit of time before you got the ambulance in the first place, though, eh? So we're next in the queue. Cool. So as soon as that bed becomes available, we'll be nabbing it and get you in, pal, all right? Okay. Sorry again about your wait, but it's just a... A sign of the times these days, I'm afraid. Oh! <laughs> posh voice, posh voice. Hello? Finally, four hours after calling for an ambulance... I do. ..and two hours after he arrived at hospital, their patient, Lawrence, can be admitted. Right, oh, we're getting in, Lawrence. You'll be glad to know. I mean, I know it's frustrating for crews to be sitting outside the hospital, but it's, it's obviously worse for the patient. They phone an ambulance to expect to pick them up and take them to hospital and then go into the hospital. But they're sometimes they're, they're in the back of an ambulance for a few hours waiting outside, you know, and it's not ideal conditions for somebody. Good, happy. Rock on, Tommy. Donkey. Tommy? Donkey. Rock, rock. rock on, donkey. No, it's rock on, Tommy. From Karen and Ball. The two I'm too, comedians. I'm too young for that. Did not even go there. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Just checking that you are all well. Um, you are good to go. I've got an hour from home wait since uh, 4 o'clock over. Oh, dear. No, we're good to go. We'll just send it our way. The call is for a patient who has been waiting for two and a half hours. She is considered bariatric, meaning she weighs more than 25 stone. Yeah, just to let you know that I know there's horrendous stacking at Ward 101 already, um, and they're looking at potentially three, four hours. So um, I'm just wondering if it's maybe worth a wee phone call to ask if it's viable for us to move this patient now. She's going to be. can't have a 26 stone person yeah, on the bed waiting for hours. That's quite a big wait to be on the stretcher for such a long time. No, if she's needing obviously assistance, and we'll just go and head down. We'll just have to wait. I'm afraid we'll have to join the queue like everyone else. Yeah, Roger, no worries. What I will do is I'll start the glove rub. You start the glove rub. 
my official warming up of the Gloveners. It's turning out to be a lovely evening. It sure is. Hello, Chris. How are we doing, chum? Hello. Been better. Hmm? Been better. Yes. I'm Scott and this is Rachel. Nice to meet you. What's been happening? <laughs> well, look, getting very well. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And how long has this been going on for? Well, it's really been going on enough a couple of weeks, but okay. the last few days has been bad. You've been struggling a bit, darling, have you? Yeah. Okay, okay. Right. Are we okay to give you a wee check over? If you want. Yeah, <laughs> and then we'll organise and get you up to the hospital, darling. Okay. Good lass. Yeah. Can I have a quick listen to your chest? Is that okay? Yeah. Just because your oxygen levels are a little bit down, we'll give you a wee bit of oxygen. Would you prefer a little tube that goes into your nose or do you want a mask on your face? I'm not bothered with other face. They'll be the same price, so. Is that okay? Comfortable wise? No. Yeah? Okay. And so then we'll think about getting our stretching and about. I'm the boss. No, I'm not the boss, she's the boss. So, so, <laughs> she, so she tells me. Women are always the boss. Well, I'm, I'm going exactly. to say, I'm going to say nothing since I'm outnumbered here. You're well and true. I'll You're royally keep, I'll outnumbered. Just keep quiet. I know my place, that's all I'll say. <laughs> because of Chris's weight, any breathing problems need to be dealt with quickly. We'll probably be up in about maybe 35, 40 minutes from the time we get her every night. Given the, the time scale, I think it's better to get her in. All right, pal. OK, cheers, bye bye. So there's a bit of an issue up at the hospital, you know, with beds and weights, all right? So, so we'll try our best to try and get you in as quick as we can, but we might have a little bit of a wait by when we get there. All right, Jim. Cool. Our stretchers, they can only be comfortable for a certain amount of time. And because the lady was bariatric, I wanted to make sure we had the right things in place that she wouldn't be on our stretcher for too long so she wouldn't be uncomfortable. Well done, darling. That's it. All right, I'm behind you. Well done. Right. You happy enough for me to do it? I'm just yeah. going to guide your background, all right, darling? OK? Let go of the bed. Oh. That's it. Well done. Oh. That's it. Right. You're all right. all right. We'll get you set up in just a sec. All right. Jenny, just sit Absolutely. Down. Sorry. Mind, this, mind this hand for me. That's the side of the bed, no my hand. All right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. Can we get your what, what else can we do to make you a little bit more comfortable? Get my bum centralised. Was you a good dancer in your younger days? Oh, yes. Just wiggle that hips across then. That's it. That's it. That done. How's that? Okay. Is that better? Okay. You can give it another, another soft day if you want. You're safe enough because there's sides of the bed that are not going to stop you moving you out, it, darling. You can push against my leg. To push yourself, if that makes sense. Not every situation is easy for moving and handling uh, bariatric patients, but fortunately for Chris, because she stayed in the ground floor flat, we were able to get our bed straight into her house. My driving's not bad. You haven't seen mine yet, Chris. I can already tell you she'll blame the roads. <laughs> right, a couple of bumps get into this ambulance, okay? Right, go on up, darling. <coughs> There's a bit of clunk going into this locking system. Oh. Like that. Oh, All right. See you up the road, Chris. When we got to hospital, there wasn't a bed available for her, so we still had to stack with her. You could see she was starting to become a little bit agitated, a little bit uncomfortable. Can I sit up a wee bit? Yeah, certainly. So she began bending in the middle a little bit. My foot's sore. This one? 
Do you want me to try and raise it up a little bit? That'd be better. Losing your baffy? I'll do my Prince Charming bit. <laughs> I'm getting in touch with exciting capacity to get one of the beds for you. All right, so once they locate one, that's when we'll probably hopefully get the ball rolling and we'll get you inside, OK? Anything I can do for you at the moment? No, you're coping. You're doing well, darling. You really are. A and E's fortune. Is it? Is it? Yeah. Because we had such such a wait for Chris, we just had to keep her as comfortable as we possibly could. And unfortunately, that's, that's the situation we were in, but we did our best, obviously, to make her comfortable. Finally, after nearly one hour, a bed is found for Chris. Scotland's ambulance control centres don't just respond to 999 calls. If anything has changed or gotten worse, give us a wee call back on 999, but I'll try again in five minutes. Thanks. They are home to specialist clinicians, whose job is to check on patients who have called for an ambulance, but who are still waiting for one to arrive. When you dial triple nine, the call gets processed by one of our call handlers. Sometimes the call handlers will recognise that there's maybe something uh, unusual about that call or something just doesn't sit right with them based on their experience, they'll highlight it to one of their supervisors who will highlight it to us. Hi there, it's just the Scottish Ambulance Service. I'm one of the paramedics who work in the ambulance control room. Are you there with them just now? Martin has contacted a patient suffering from breathing difficulties. This was classed as an amber call. Our highest level of response is purple, generally for cardiac arrests or an imminent cardiac arrest. We have red calls where our people with perhaps a serious hemorrhage or a high mechanism of injury in a road traffic crash. Then we have amber calls. The ambers are, are generally sort of more specific, so they'll be for episodes of things like sepsis, potential for stroke, uh, or where they, they have a known respiratory condition and they have shortness of breath that is likely to lead to something more life-threatening. Take your time, take your time, okay? Right. Right. OK, OK, let's just go back just a wee, a, a wee bit. Is he conscious and breathing at the moment? Are you right next to him? Is he able to speak to me on the phone if you're next to him? Oh, bless him. OK. OK. I believe he's got a wee bit of back pain as well. OK, would you mind asking him if he's got any chest pain as well as back pain? He's not slurring his words. Does he appear to be speaking normally to you? OK, so there, there, there's kind of a wee bit of confusion about him. We assume the worst and we take it from there and we remove the risk from that. So we'll be looking for definitive things to, to start with, whether the patient's conscious, what's their level of consciousness like, are they breathing, what's their level of breathing like. Right, how would you describe his colour, just to make sure? Apparently he's, he's got a wee bit of discoloration to his feet. Good. Any swelling to his ankles at all? Cold extremities. And then from there we start to exclude different symptoms. Quite often we'll come across some medical conditions that the system doesn't really recognise, but we know can cause shortness of breath, can cause fast heart rate, so things like sepsis. OK, good. And I believe he feels a wee bit hot kind of at the head. Was that with the back of your hand on his forehead? Did he feel like he was hot? Yeah, yeah. OK, doc. All right. Yeah, I'm with you. Okay, doke. Um, it sounds like it, it's possibly just that that, that infection's just gotten a, a, a right good idea. And in this particular call, we, we got a great range of information. 
and we were able to get a very, very full picture for this patient to make a, an adequate clinical decision that there was a good risk of sepsis going on. Sepsis is a serious and potentially life-threatening reaction to an infection. OK. Brilliant. Right. Um, we've we've organised uh, an ambulance anyway. Um, we will be there just as soon as we can. I'm, treat I'm treating it as sepsis just because of the way that you've described it with them. That new confusion, the weakness, the fact that you can sit up, these are all kind of risks. You've done a cracking job, all right? I know that you feel like you're, you're kind of sort of, sort of panicking and worrying about what to do. You've done everything right, all right? Just, you know, just be kind to yourself. It's OK. Right. Uh, we'll be there just as soon as we can. It's 10.30 in the evening in Aberdeen. And Rachel and Scott are nearing the end of a long shift. We are going to a 38-year-old male. It's a code 25, so psychiatric. A male who's taken an overdose and has been drinking 70% homemade vodka since 7 a.m. Oof. 70%. And he's still feeling suicidal. He's got pain in his stomach. And he sounds intoxicated. What percentage is normal vodka? 40. Oh, my God. Obviously, the alcohol content on his homemade vodka was quite high, so that was a concern. But also, the call had been in for quite a while before we were allocated to it. Six hours, I think. Yeah. Sound asleep. Yeah, Roger, we're not getting any, any response from this property. Can you advise what time the last welfare check was done at? That's all understood, thank you. Uh, we'll try another flat, see if we can get into the building at least. So, yeah, if you don't mind giving a call, that'd be great. Well done. Lovely, thanks. Five o'clock. The information we got from the control room was that if he'd waited that long for an ambulance, he could be quite unwell. Oh, hello, it's the ambulance service. Can you let us in the building, please? You know, if he had been drinking all that vodka, then he'd be severely intoxicated and, you know, anything could have happened to him. That's it. Oh, that's Thank it. You. Thank you. Hello? It's the ambulance. Oh. Hello? Oh, wow. How's it going? Mm. Well, can be better, can be Oh, dear. Mm. Can we come in? Mm. Is that all right? That's fine. Rock on. But I remember walking into the flat and thinking that if this guy had been drinking quite a substantial amount of alcohol at that strength, he'd be quite intoxicated and potentially could be quite hard to manage. But I think that due to the time delay of us getting to him, he kind of sobered up by the time we got there. What's your name, fella? Peter. Peter, nice to meet you. My name's Rachel, this is Scott. Well, he's no first time in nights, no last time. OK. What's, listen, what's happened this evening? What's happened? Well, I was drunk. OK. Hmm? Just alcohol? Uh, well, some tablets as well. OK. What tablets have you taken? Just, uh, well, I would say, like, a, I call that, like, a sweeties. The crew prepare to run through their checks, but it's obvious what Peter's problem is. If you don't mind me asking, Peter, are you alcohol dependent? Well, don't need to. OK. But... If you understand, I don't, I don't know how to stop. Stop, yeah. I am normal, but I need a help. Yeah, understand. I understand, I understand. Well, to get a sober, you know, you're shaking, you're sweating, you mm -hmm. have, yeah. uh, well, mm, crazy things, if you understand. Crazy yeah. thoughts. Crazy thoughts, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously tough for you. Uh, yeah, then, it is. And then, basically, that's why you keep drinking, because 
it numbs those thoughts, doesn't it? You don't treat anyone different just because they're intoxicated. As long as you keep it cool and calm, most of the time they're the same back to you. So just to kind of recap on what we've said, we've had quite a substantial amount of vodka. We've taken an overdose of tablets mm -hmm. sometime in the morning. And it's not the first time. And it's, it's not, not the, the first time. time. Mm -hmm. I would say. And it's because you were feeling a bit bored, a bit fed up, yes. and because you want to go back home. Is that right? Yes. Cool. Okay. But I don't and know you... how. Okay. And you want some help with your alcohol, but you don't feel like you're quite getting the help that you think you need. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Okay. And if you don't mind me asking, Peter, have you attempted to harm yourself? Yes, I do. Okay. Tonight or previous times? Mm, time to times. Okay, okay. But you haven't harmed yourself this evening. It has just been alcohol and the tablets. Okay, all right. He had taken an overdose of um, tablets and he had indicated to us that he'd done that to end his life. So with that in mind, he, you know, we, we couldn't leave the guy at home without further assessment and further help. Basically, we need to take you up to the hospital. Again. Okay. I know it well, was some... Well, uh, on the hospital, mm, already they knows me. Mm-hmm. We have a duty of care to you, all right? We need to make sure that you're okay. We need yes, to make I sure Yes, I know. That you're it's safe. your procedure. Yes. And we need to take you up. I can't physically drag you by the heels. And I know you're of sound mind. And I know the way you're feeling <coughs> is kind of a reoccurring problem for you. But we need to address that, OK? Scotland's three ambulance control centres receive 1.6 million calls a year, an average of over 4,000 a day. Ambulance emergency, is the patient breathing? Is the patient awake? Some patients are new to the world. How's the wee ones breathing looking just now? Right, OK. I'm going to get some help organised for her. Stay on the line. Now, is she completely alert? No, OK. And does she have asthma or other lung problems? Calls with children, they can be a little bit difficult because kids can deteriorate so quickly. So you need to need to be vigilant and keep an eye on them. And does she have a prescribed inhaler? She's on oxygen, right, OK. So I've organised some help for you. If you stay on the line, I'll tell you exactly what to do next. From now on, don't let her have anything to eat or drink, as it might make her sick or cause further problems. Just let her rest in the most comfortable position and wait for help to arrive. Just watch her very closely and look for any changes. And if she becomes less awake or starts getting worse, tell me immediately. No, OK, we are coming as quickly as we can. Children have a faster respiration rate than adults. Um, so we really rely on the people around the child to watch the child's breathing and let us know if anything changes. No, is she still blue? Yeah. OK. Is it just her lips or has she got any colour changes anywhere? She's gone very quiet. OK. Is she still awake? Quite often, if parents have discovered the child having a seizure, that can be really distressing to see. Um, so it's important to try and keep the, the parent nice and calm because we need to be calm so we can help the baby. OK. Just reassure Mum the help is arranged, OK? We are coming. Yeah. 
And I'm just here in the background, okay? So just let me know if anything changes. So, is she waking up a wee bit now? Right. Okay, we are coming as quickly as we can, okay? Just be ready to look out for the crew, okay? Is that, is that the car? Right, just tell me when they're right in with you. Right in, right, I'll leave you with the paramedic, okay? Take care. Bye now. That was a lot. <sighs> a lot of voices in the background. Um, everybody talking at once, children crying in the background, just a lot of loud volume in my head. <laughs> and it's trying to filter what's in the background to what I need to listen out for. Um, it's a bit sensory overloading sometimes. There's a lot going on and it's just very distracting, but being able to hyper-focus on the call that I'm on is a great strength because I can zoom in on what I'm doing. Back in Aberdeen, Rachel and Scott are trying to persuade Peter to come to hospital. But first, he wants to show the crew what's keeping him at home. What do you think? What is that? <laughs> is that your homemade vodka? Just, um, just sniff it this oh. time. <laughs> that stings my eyeballs, that. Yeah. Crikey. <laughs> Yeah, the vodka was strong. Uh, and I mean, I don't think it's anything I would have been trying. If it meant us smelling his vodka, just for us to build a rapport and for him to trust us and, you know, know that we were there to help him, then that was the way that it went. Let's pop your jacket on. Let's get you up to the hospitals, let them check you over. I would say mentally I am not okay. Yeah, exactly. And listen, we can't leave you here when you're mentally unstable, okay? Well, you're not well. What, Listen, what? you're you're not well. You have suicidal thoughts, okay? Well, yes, I. And we need to, we need to look after you. All right. It's a shame on me, you know. <laughs> well, I need a job for you to dealing with me. Listen, it's not about that. It's our job to look after you, okay? So don't worry about that. All right, chum. It's just a tough time that you're struggling with and we can we can get you some help. Okay? I can't drag you out, but I strongly recommend you come with us. Okay? This gentleman hadn't been looking after himself at all. He was in a dark place. He'd got himself into a bit of a rut. He hadn't been eating, he hadn't been kind of drinking anything other than alcohol. Your English is very good. Uh, well, trying to. Oh, Even it's very the, good. Uh, I, would say, uh, I would say Polish, uh, Russian is well. It's easy for me to... Snap into another language. Yes. Yeah. I just listen and, well, I just learn. Can you speak Doric? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Well, I know just one thing, fit like me. Fit like? Mm -hmm. Nay bad, who's yourself? <laughs> <laughs> well, very bad. I mean, it can be a bit of a roller coaster sometimes, you know, certain times we can have the worst job in the world, and then the next minute it's the best job in the world. But we're a, we're a close-knit family, and, you know, we build relationships with people we work with. Right, Peter, let's get you up the road, shall we? I just uh, really need to speak with someone or, or be with someone, if you understand. Because to be alone uh -huh. is driving me a crazy. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, it's very busy down here. I see. I understand. 
Not for the first time. The crew and their patient will need to wait. So we are tenth in the queue. There's, uh, there's about four vehicles here that have been here for over two and a half hours. And all the rest are kind of an hour and a half, an hour and so down to us of eight minutes. There's a major trauma in resource one. So that's scuppering and everybody and there's 13 in the waiting room waiting to go through as well. So. We may be here a while, my friend. Mm -hmm. All right. I understand, yes. Not every job we attend will require uh, medical interventions. Sometimes it's just a case of sitting down with someone, you know, listening to their problems, listening to what's been happening to them. And sometimes that, this, that something as little as that can make a difference to that person. You know, and us having the opportunity to take him to hospital to further his care um, will benefit him down the line, hopefully. You know, because there's people out there that don't ask for help. And those are the ones that end up, you know, in, in a lot of trouble. Oh, well, man. Well, I would say for the saving the life, it's mm, not a good point, if you understand. No, no. It's not any help. I know, I know. <laughs> but hopefully we'll get you the help you need, my man. You know, for, for that gentleman, all in, it had nearly been 12 hours from time of call to getting him into the emergency department. That's just something that we're faced with day in, day out at the moment, unfortunately. But not at any point did he complain.